I mean, it's pretty bad in my opinion. It's pretty. Ugly. <laughs> this is beautiful. Straight up horrible. Arousing. Maybe let's not post the last one. Yeah, maybe not. All right, tell me what racket I'm reviewing today. Today we are reviewing the strike. Guys, welcome back to Gladiator's Tennis. And yes, today we're reviewing the, the strike. 16 by 19, a racket highly requested by all of you guys. So yeah, check out the specs. All right, move. your favorite brand yeah you know what's funny this might actually be the only racket in the whole Babylon lineup that properly fits my my playing style hopefully it won't disappoint thank you so yeah the strike should have been the racket from Babylon that fits me best but to be honest I didn't enjoy it that much the thing is that when brands try to come up with a balanced racket there's only two possible outcomes either they create something really outstanding and incredible or the end product is a racket that pretty much sucks at everything. That sounded a bit rough, but I'll try to clarify what I mean. So usually the rackets tilted towards control have a small head and a tight string pattern. And rackets more focused on power and spin have larger heads and looser string patterns. In the case of the strike, we get a small head, but a 16 by 19 string pattern. As a result, you get an average control, not enough power or feel, no spin, okay, no spin. It doesn't spin the ball, no matter the string pattern. And listen, I know there are rackets on the market that nail it. The EZO 98, for example, or my Gravity Pro, but Strike, not so much. I don't really know why, but my flat forehands didn't feel secure. Understanding that, I decided to switch my gameplay into a more defensive one, but guess what? Spin was unachievable, and whenever I tried to play a deep ball with a lot of refs, my opponent could easily attack it. Backhands did feel a bit better. I was sometimes managing to play aggressive down the line shots, though cross-court rallies and quick short changes in direction resulted being pretty complicated. That is obviously due to the lack of spin that I was talking about. Even though my backhands are pretty flat, especially compared to my forehand, to properly open up the court, I still need to flick the wrist, and the racket wasn't helping me. I did a few slices, though I'm not gonna get into it because who cares about slices. Game of the Nat was the most disappointing part of the playtest. The racket is 98 inch and yeah, sweet spot should be small. But I've played with rackets with smaller heads and they felt better. I often created a perfect opportunity with my ground strokes to finish the point at the volley but couldn't quite do it because I wasn't hitting it in the dead center and apparently volleying isn't achievable if you're not better with this racket. Serve was the shot that I was looking towards the most, and I found no luck there. I mean, first serves were fine, but that's it. No crazy power or incredible direction. I was just putting it in. The second serves were straight up bad. As you might have guessed, a racket that has a low potential for spin isn't gonna offer much in the top and second serves department. I don't really know who I'd recommend this racket to, because if you want full on control, there are better options out there. Maybe even the 1820 version of the strike. Want a more powerful and spinny frame? Babolat itself has the pure drive and the aero. Uh, oh, the design. Um, not a fan, that's all I'm gonna say. Design is subjective. Nikki, 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 catch! Oh, yeah! That's is Dominic team racket. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> What's up, lads, and welcome back. And today we're checking out this awesome frame, the Bubble Lodge Track. When I took this racket into my hands, I instantly fell in love with the design. The combination of white and red color palette is sick. It gives this frame an aggressive look. 
Unfortunately, this is the only positive characteristic of this frame, as the rest did not impress me at all. Now, Dominic team endorses this racket, so I was expecting to hit massive topspin cross courts, but after a few forehands and backhands, I had mixed feelings about it. So let's dive in. Alright, let's start with the forehands. Honestly, I don't understand how team can generate so much topspin with this frame. My shots felt very dull and dry. I wasn't able to generate as much spin as I'm used to, and my balls were flying very flat and slow. There were moments where I couldn't get the ball deeper than the service line. Fortunately, as the playtest went on, I shifted my game style to a more flat forehand shot, and I started to come forward more often. This is the game style that this racket is good for. I noticed how my forehands became more effective against my opponents, the balls were flying deeper and closer to the sidelines. Overall, I would say that this is a frame that is perfect for players who like to hit flatter and more aggressive forehands. On the back side, it was a different story. From the first ball, I was pleased with the feeling that this frame provided. The shots felt very natural and it was easy to control the ball. I could generate so much power that I was able to hit winners from any point on the court. Also, the defensive shots were spectacular, as I was able to place them in such a way that my opponents wouldn't be able to attack again. This is a really good frame for players who have a flat backhand and like to slam winners. So, as I switched to a more aggressive game style, I felt obligated to come to the net. And this track it, nah, was alright. Now, I'm not sure why, but every time that I would make contact with the ball away from the center of the racket, the ball would just lose the power, meaning that my wallies weren't that solid. I was making a lot of mistakes, giving my opponents a chance to pass me. Therefore, from my point of view, this is not a racket that suits my wallies. Ok, so, let's shift back to the baseline and talk about the serves. The strike gave me a lot of power from my second serves. I was able to generate a lot of topspin and open up the court. Thanks to the spin and power that this racket provided, I put my opponents in a situation where they wouldn't be able to attack my second serve as easily as they normally do. The first serves on the other hand felt strange. I had the same feeling as on the volleys, meaning that if my balls wouldn't hit the center of the racket, the shots would lose a lot of power. So I was forced to serve more of a first second serve style. Finally, let's talk about the returns. These shots were somewhat strange, especially on the second serves. See, I like to return the second serves with topspin, placing the balls close to the baseline. And this racket didn't help me in this aspect. I was struggling to generate any topspin, and my balls were flying too deep. Thus, I had to step in and take the balls on the right, causing me to make more errors. Similar thing happened on the first serves, but this time I was successful to use the momentum of the powerful first serves and get the ball in. Overall, this is a frame that is best for aggressive players, especially for the ones who like to hit flat, strong balls. Now, if you are a player like me, who likes to hit the balls with more topspin, then this is not the best choice, and you should look for something more powerful. Guys, if you like the pure strike, the way it looks and the way it plays, and if you've enjoyed the review, subscribe. And if you don't like the racket, subscribe so you see some other rackets that this video. Makes sense, right? Logic. There you go. Aregi! Wepa! Another one-handed backhand racket. Why you say it to me, man? I'm fantastically loyal to my 200 backhands. Fantastically loyal? Only 200. As loyal as you are to your girlfriend. Yes, that's why I don't have it anymore. Let's go. <laughs> Apparently Bagola thinks that to be fresh looking and trendy, they need to hire designers, but only once in 20 years. Don't get me wrong, I consider that the combination of the colors and shapes are perfectly put together. It's just that the design language of Bagola in general uh, is older than uh, Federer. Uh, by the way, happy late birthday Roger, and you're welcome for calling you old. Every day, man. Every day. Moving on. The head size of 98 inches is nicely filled with the 16 by 90 string pattern, 
which provides that supreme power to control ratio that we all look for in a racket. My game in general is based on my, uh, you know, unlimited variation of shots. And indeed, when trying to play the way I enjoy, this racket was a good companion. For example, it cuts through the air easily so you can be nippy and fast on the net. I can't say too many positive stuff about the backhand, as I didn't feel the freedom of risking with those shots. But obviously, I always find my magic somewhere. And this time it was on the forehand. Simply powerful, precise and pleasant. I could spin from the baseline and also hit fast shots when entering the court. When serving, I was suffering to hit slice serves. But it was fine because my opponent was suffering even more with my flat serves. <laughs> Second serves felt secure as well. You can really feel that spinning isn't a big deal with the bowlet. But returning was just a pleasure. Grisha got insecure about his serves because I was returning them like if he was a 12 year old. So what's my final verdict? Definitely consider this frame. It will give you a good balance of feel and force and you can give it to your grand-grandson one day in the future. It will still look like the same as the latest model from Babolat. As always, now it's time for the grades. You can guess how high Grisha's grade on the sexiness compartment will be. Let's see. <laughs> So guys, like pretty much always, we've used uh, Luxalon Adrenaline 130 and we've strung it at, guess what, 25 kilograms, which is this much in pounds. She fits my playstyle, so yeah. Come on! And a backhand racket! Why you say it to me, man? I'm only loyal to my 200 pounds. You're only loyal to your two-handed backhand. English teacher! What the... Arugi! Another one-handed... Uh, Guys, if you like the new strike, well, it's not the new strike. Another one-handed backhand racket. Why you say it to me, man? I'm very loyal to my... <laughs>